Hello, Wayne Westland School Community. I'm Dr. John Dignan, Superintendent of Wayne Westland Community Schools. Join me today as our new Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Julie Campbell. For the past several weeks, we've been in the midst of a close budget review following our audit. As Superintendent, my goal is always to share the facts with you. We've sought to do this through letters, and today we want to provide a short video as our financial investigation wraps up. In social media, there's been a lot of speculation about audit and the budget discrepancies. I and Mrs. Campbell want to address these issues directly. It is crucial to set the record straight and provide you with accurate information. I'm gonna ask Ms. Campbell to talk about some of these budget discrepancies. Thank you, Dr. Dignan. There are many false statements on social and mainstream media that just aren't true. I'll start by saying that there's no evidence of missing money. There were two major budget issues that contributed to this surprise decrease in the district fund balance from what was projected to be 15.6% to an actual fund balance of 6.2%. Last year, that unexpected reduction in the fund balance surprised many. This reduction resulted from two significant budgetary issues that do need some explanation. First, in school finance, there are what we term flow-through transactions, anticipated revenue designated for a specific purpose offset by corresponding expenditures. So what this means is that your revenue coming in is equal to your expenditure going out and your change to the bottom line is a net zero. One such transaction amounting to about $8.4 million targeted for the Office of Retirement Services, which is the state pension system, had a significant impact on our fund balance. Unfortunately, while the revenue was budgeted, the corresponding expenditures were not, creating a misleading appearance of a higher fund balance. The second budgetary challenge arose from various factors, including all staff seniority steps, salary increases, new bonuses, and we also saw a 4.1% increase in district-wide health care hard caps, and a significant surge in the district's retirement contribution liability. Additionally, operational costs spiked due to inflation. All these factors totaled approximately $15 million more, mostly in wages and benefits, than the prior year. Regrettably, these increased expenditures were not factored into the final budget amendment, contributing to the apparent decline in the fund balance, as shown by Plant Moran's annual presentation. It's crucial to emphasize that there is no missing money, and instead, the perceived discrepancy in the district fund balance results from expenditures not included in the final budget amendment. So as we navigate through these complexities, transparency and accurate information remain paramount in addressing concerns and fostering a clear understanding of the financial landscape. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. I want to again note that when the budget discrepancy was identified, the district responded immediately and worked with our new financial team to understand what had occurred. I'm confident that working together with our Board of Education, union leadership, and school community, we will get through this. All of us are committed to providing a quality education to every student. Thank you for your partnership as we continue to keep you informed and updated, and thank you for joining us.